Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is The Session 2023, Day 1. Before I do this review-ish, can you please go and actually don't do it now, do it afterwards. Actually, you can do it now if you want. Uh, OnlineMagic.co, that's my online magic resource. Over 800 videos of me, uh, 100 odd live sessions uploaded with some special guests actually, and uh, growing by the month. Check it out, OnlineMagic.co and see what other people have to say about it. It's just, it never gets any negative reviews and I'm very, very proud of it. Years in the making. So you can, uh, onlinemagic.co, learn from a pro. Did it the wrong way around then. Uh, don't matter, does it? And like and subscribe. Do that, please. And go to Instagram, at Steve Faulkner. I have got a Real Magic review one, but I just put the reviews on that. But at Steve Faulkner is uh, my main one now. That'd be lovely. Okay, so this is different. What I usually do in the session is I get footage all day, I watch everything, I make notes, and then I record a review at the end of the day and then edit it in the morning, put it out and start again. This year, I was lucky enough to be asked to host it, um, which I've been banging on about on social media because it was very exciting and I had a lovely time. But because of that, I couldn't do two things. I didn't want to sort of get my mind off hosting and kind of be making notes and making videos, I'd have been exhausted. So I'm doing this afterwards, which means uh, my memory of certain things, I didn't make loads of notes, I'll miss things out of what people did and I apologise for that in advance. But it's quite good really because the stuff that sticks is still there and the um, the stuff that didn't... Con Actually, there wasn't that much that I didn't connect with. But on that, there are people that had a big effect on me that doesn't necessarily mean they would on you. I'm not the sort of person who can learn very easily from lectures with card magic and things like that. So it's very, very hard for me to watch a lecture of just card magic and be objective about it because I just can't learn that way. It doesn't go in. I have to watch the performance bit of it and then go squirrel away and learn it. So, you know, have that in mind as well. This isn't saying what's good and bad. This is just my feelings and thoughts and what I've come away with. And this is day one. So day one started with me pretty much being terrified uh, I've never hosted a magic convention, and which I've now got over, I think, this fear of kind of performing in front of magicians that I had for years because I didn't do it for ages. It seemed a very odd thing for me. And I was hosting the whole thing. So, so I had a comfort blanket, really, because I didn't have to do magic. I ended up doing some in the end. Um, but there was still that thing niggling away at me. So, so I was kind of nervous. Um, but after I'd been on, it was kind of okay. So that was the first morning. I, I was enjoying everybody turning up. I was helping out on Damien on reception because I liked to have something to do. And, uh, and then it was time for the thing to start. So the, we'll talk about the whole kind of ambience and the feeling of the convention in a minute. But the first one was Matt Bacon. Now there was a lot of kind of, you know, when I was doing my limited research on this, uh, there's a lot of mathematics going on and things like that and psychology, which I love about the session. But I was thinking, I'm not going to engage with this because, you know, if I can't learn car magic in a lecture, I can't learn magic not in a, um, mathematics not in a lecture. I can't, I'm, I really struggle with it. And I really want to. I want to be able to do mental arithmetic. arithmetic. And I talked to Matt about this before, but that really wasn't what he was doing. He was explaining concepts and making them you know, entertaining with magic. So he's very aware that mathematics can be dull, as can card magic, as can everything, of course. But, uh, but it can be. And so he, his thing is to take those concepts, give them good presentations, as we know by the book... Um, uh, not expect the card table didn't write that, did he? <laughs> Showing your knowledge there, Steve. Bonavista Shuffle Club. I don't know why I went expert, probably because I had the same rhythm. Uh, so, and I love that book, and it was really lovely to me. Matt is a, just such a lovely, lovely man, and great to talk to, and his lecture was really, really, it was a perfect opening lecture, really. It was just really relaxed. He's very uh, relaxed and nice and confident, and he does... He gave us some great mathematical principles, but you didn't know they were math mathematical principles. So he, he, is it mathematic principles or mathematical? Anyway, that's irrelevant. He did this lovely trick with M&Ms where he got, you know, two people to get a lot of M&Ms, count them out and decide what colour and do things like that. And, and he would, he would have predicted uh, the numbers of M&Ms and the colours and, and that's completely butchering what actually happened. So just, but what I remember seeing it going, great M&Ms, that's fun. Wow, that's really impressive. And then when he explained it, it was that 
it's a mathematical principle, but you don't have to be adding up anything. That's what I was trying to kind of get to before. So that was great. And then he did bits and pieces from Bonavista, Bonavista Shuffle Club. And it was, I had to kind of run in and out, you know, because I had to do certain things. So, because the hosting, so I didn't catch every minute of it, but it was a, it was a really strong lecture. I came away, as I did with Art Benjamin's lecture later on, going, I really want to, I'm really going to get the grips with this. And that's a good thing. If you see that kind of stuff that is numbers based and you, and I walk away thinking, I want to be able to do that better that's a really quite a rare thing. Usually, halfway through a lecture like that, I'm done. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, uh, which did happen a couple of times in all of these lectures. But but then I was kind of brought back into it. Next was the afternoon session where we had Jack Ty. I, I'd seen a bit of Jack's work through his downloads. He's got loads of downloads on Car Magic. I've never seen him perform, um, and I thought he was just a technician. I said to him beforehand, you know, just doing technical stuff. He's like, no, no, I'm doing kind of routines. And actually, I don't know why, I think whenever I think of a technician, I, I just think of them going through moves. And actually his set was really entertaining. He's got a lovely manner, again, very confident and very funny. He's got this very kind of droll, kind of dry sense of humour. And I just, I just really liked his his session and again just for card magic that's quite a rare thing for me usually i will switch off don't get me look card magic is my favorite thing but in again in that scenario for jack was great we also had um stephen bridges now stephen again i hadn't known a lot about him i know that the guys from the daily magician talk about stephen a lot and i just presumed he was doing magic on youtube uh, which i thought was very good but i didn't know he was doing all this card counting stuff and Stephen's channel's great. If you check out his stuff, you know, he goes around the world, going into casinos uh, with hidden cameras, doing card counting and with large amounts of money. And he's got some great stories. And, you know, him explaining not how to do card counting, but the kind of, the, the, the sort of some theory around it and talking about his adventures was really entertaining. So we've got two very different things here and then something very different again. Gustav Kuhn and um, Alice Payes. Yes, that's how you say it, I think. They've written a new book. Now, I've talked about Gustav's book, Experiencing the Impossible, which I love about the science of magic, which I always say is, I think every magician should read it. It's, it's a stunning book, and, and it is a magic book. It's, you know, it's available on Amazon and stuff like that, but when you read it, it's great for magicians, even though it's written for lay people mostly, I think. But it gives you that why of, of kind of, you know, why magic tricks work. And incidentally, they were doing loads of stuff separately, you know, in the side room, the magic lab. They're doing a lot of research around the science of magic and researching, interviewing magicians and having focus groups and doing eye tracker experiments. So they're doing some very important work that's going to benefit all of us. And they have a new book on the psychology of magic, which looks stunning. I haven't got it yet. But if it's anything like Gustav's book, which I'm absolutely sure it will be, it'll be another really important book for us. And they, I, again, we were getting near the end there, so I'd kind of rush in and out. But all of Gustav's work and all of what they were talking about, I was hearing from other magicians afterwards, was again, really important stuff. You know, surprising how lay people respond to certain things as opposed to, well, versus what we think they're going to respond to. So they've worked with lay people and giving them surveys to sort of say, you know, which one did you prefer, which was more magical, which, all that kind of stuff. And the results are surprising. And the famous one that Gustav talked about last time was this idea of the crosscut force being more convincing than the classic force, which of course devastated magicians. Now I'm not doing their talk justice because again, I, this is a point where I had to kind of run about. When the book comes out, because it's not out officially yet, don't think that's not a magic book like the others. I do recommend you reading this stuff and if you haven't got it yet come back to experiencing the impossible and looking at the work that soma are doing uh, soma the society of the science of magic association and um, and the magic lab in goldsmiths now next was peter turner and i'd re just been listening to peter's interview with craig petty which i really loved and and that was great because he, he's someone I've seen around for years and heard what he did but because I'm not a mentalist I hadn't actually watched a lot of his stuff and I know that with a lot of Peter's work people think it's stooged because it's so strong there's a famous story that he talks about where Kenton Nepper wouldn't take on his first publication because he said you're clearly using stooges um, when he saw the videos and he wasn't and 
it, his stuff is very, very inspiring because it's all the things you, you read and go, oh, I'm never going to get away with that. And he does it and he does get away with it, but he takes risks and sometimes he doesn't, but he's always got somewhere to go with it. And I, I really enjoyed the lecture. I think he's really good on stage. Um, and the things he talks about are great. Excuse me. I was inspired again to take a few more risks, which I think is, is what I need to do with my magic and with the mentalism that I do. Um, I think it may be, maybe it was a little bit, maybe five minutes too long if I'm going to be picky. Uh, but that was probably something to do with the fact that I'm 49 and I had about three hours sleep. You know, by that time, it's, and the fact you can engage me for an hour and 10 minutes, it went on for an hour and 15, I think. And a lot of that, of course, because I'm nervous about going back on a little bit. But I, I think Pete is someone that I'm going to go back and, and look at, re-look at a lot of his stuff because... You know, it does work. He was doing it. And the things that he kind of missed out, he justified by going into into other kind of area in, in directions. And, you know, he talks about why he does a lot of stuff. You know, the power of, um, you know, just doing a kind of drop, doing a hypnosis drop. You know, the, the power of that. And also loads of lovely little things, which again makes you realise that he actually goes out and does this. Because he does, you know, he's a consultant as well. And he's an expert, but you know, so as he said, when you, you know, if you're doing app work, work with an app on stage, like a lot of us do, I do, you know, calculator, you know, eye thump, and things like that, Toxic Plus. So be careful when you're at a corporate event because you've got everybody on their phones. And if they get a photo at that point, it looks like everybody's ignoring you on stage and looking at their phone. And just little gems like that, which I really enjoy. So again, you know, everything up to this point is, was just great. There was no real weak points. And then Mark Kobe. Mark Elby, you know, to be totally honest, I've got my head so much in reviews and learning stuff that I miss huge things. I know that Mark Elby had won FISM with Card Magic, but I hadn't seen his work. And, you know, I went and did my little bit of research, watched the videos, absolutely loved it. You know, reminiscent of Le Leonard Green without being, you know, a copy of Leonard Green. And I mean that with, I'm only going to get fed up being told it, I think, but that's a, I mean that in a way that, it's a compliment. He he comes out and he's got that kind of bumbling isn't the word. Leonard Green was very bumbling, but he's got this almost sort of semi-confused, doesn't really know where he is or doesn't feel comfortable where he is, which I think is building on his own kind of character. He's definitely very much, you know, on stage, he's not that far away from who he is on stage, isn't that far away from who he is off stage. And I like that. And there's this theme running through this thing of authenticity. Same with Morton Christensen. It's like they're building on what they are and they've got a, a, a high level of self-awareness. And so he's got this thing where, you know, he knows he's not going to be the guy going, hey, you know, doing the, doing the really flashy stuff. But he is doing flashy stuff, but hidden. But also he's not scared to bring something into play that may simplify what he does for the effect. One of the first moments of his act is something that we would go oh right you know i thought that was just purely you know without giving anything away but he's also of course incredibly skilled he's 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 got that lovely confidence and this whole thing about him getting the crisps out and being all relaxed and it just feels like you're kind of sitting you know hanging out with someone doing some magic to a couple of people which you kind of are i suppose but I, you know the shame a little bit that and you can't avoid this when the gala shows at the end of the night of course and I've thought this a lot at conventions, but it is a shame when you see someone's lecture and then you see the show. You know, I think it would have been lovely for people who hadn't seen him before to just for him to walk out and just be a complete mystery and see where that unfolded. And that was the only thing I would say about that. He, he lectures in a similar style that he performs, which is this very relaxed kind of, again, being quite funny um, and for carb magic. You know, any card magic lecture is difficult for me to engage with, but I was engaged with it. But again, then I had to clearly go and run off. So I missed that, that kind of last half. But um, Mark Kelby is one of those people, and we'll talk about it when we talk about the performance. So I, that is, again, a breath of fresh air. As is, my new favourite magician, and I was a bit gushy about this probably on stage, is Nick DeFat. Now, Nick, uh, what's his book? His, his new book, which is somewhere... Oh, where is it? That's annoying. Um, offbeat, which I'd received, I'd heard Nick's name in uh, for the first time in kind of Murphy's Magic down, um, instructional downloads where they said, oh, Nick DeFat had an idea on this, etc. Uh, so he was being talked about as someone quite creative and then the book came out, which I got very recently, which I had a flip through and went, this is great. And everybody was kind of responding to the book and then you realise he's done quite a lot of TV, he stands in for Matt King, uh, Late Late Show, etc. And 
his lecture was just so oh, his show. Sorry, he was doing his show, doing his, le doing his lecture uh, another time. But his show was the perfect thing to be on after that first evening when everybody's knackered. Just lifted everybody up. Genuinely, genuinely hilarious. He's one of those people where, a bit like Williamson, he's not like Williamson, he's very different to Williamson, but in that respect where he's doing strong magic, but it becomes about you just enjoying his company and you just know that whatever happens in that show is going to be totally fine because you're enjoying him so much. But there is also some very strong magic. It's a fine line between being really funny, doing strong magic, being skilled and it all coming together perfectly. And, and you know, after... That show, I was kind of going, right, that's why everybody's talking about Nick DeVat. And I think he is one of the, he's going to be, and he is, and will continue to be, probably one of my favourite magicians or performers for a long time. Um, you know, one of those people that could come on as well and not do magic and still be very funny, as he was off stage. You know, we had a very, you know, a couple of brief chats off stage and just seemed to be one of those people that just has funny bones. Uh, so do, if you don't know Nick's stuff, do check out the book but also watch his you know work on on YouTube and you'll start understanding and I think for years and years you know unless he goes out of the convention bit and just gets too famous and ends up being a being a star you know getting a a uh, Vegas residency is someone that you do need to watch you know make it a, if, if you're at a convention where loads are going on you go oh, I haven't seen this stuff you make make that a priority so that was day one um it's a lovely, this was a lovely, lovely first day, as was the whole convention. The last one was in July, was it? Or June or July, because of COVID. So we had one six months later, which was weird. Everybody was going, oh, it seemed like a year ago since the last one. And then it wasn't, of course. Last time they had these big gaps for people to session and hang out. And I loved that as well. But this did feel it had a little bit more uh, atmosphere because there was kind of, there was more stuff on. And there was still enough gaps for people to hang out. But... And just the quality of the stuff and the variety of, of, of the work. And please don't think, I've had this running gang, people think I'm affiliated with Vanishing Inc. They've, they've just been very supported, put, supportive and we've, you know, sent me stuff from day one and, you know, allowed me to come film at the, at the, the session. So this isn't affiliated, this is the, my genuine feelings for, um, for a convention which I felt energised, even though I was knackered, I felt energised by um, and after day one going to bed coming back the next day i just thought that was just a really lovely first day so there it is day one of the session remember after this do go and check out it'll take you two minutes onlinemagic.co have a look see what it's all about ask me any questions about that please like and subscribe and i shall be back very soon with day two any questions comments below and i'll uh, talk about them on the next live one which will be thursday